Coventry City putting their bodies on the line. And that's it! Coventry City, a club which was broken. It was homeless. It was at war. But they refused to go under. They're heading to Wembley. Nobody, and I mean nobody, saw this coming. On this channel I've done a couple videos on the incredible rise of Luton Town with the Hatters having been a League 2 side in 2018 but something that's not been mentioned anywhere near as much is the fact that placed 4 spots below them that season was none other than Coventry City who would go on to be promoted to League 1 at Wembley that same campaign. 5 years later and they're back at Wembley but this time round fighting for a spot in the world's best league. Except the thing is 2018 is nowhere near the beginning of this tale. This is the truly remarkable rise, fall and rise again of Coventry City. The 13th of August 1883, Willie Stanley, a factory working employee of the local Singer Cycle Company was able to convince a group of his co-workers to create a new football team in the city of Coventry initially named Singers FC. 15 years down the line and they'd rebrand themselves to Coventry City Football Club, having quickly become the biggest team in the city, swiftly moving into Highfield Road Stadium near the city centre where they would play in regional leagues until 1919, where following the conclusion of the First World War they would be elected into the second division of the English Football League. For the next 40 years, the Sky Blues remained a relatively modest and unsuccessful club before two promotions in four seasons saw them promoted to the first division for the first time ever. Another 20 seasons passed with Coventry finishing in the top half just twice before the 1986-87 campaign saw them finish 10th, but also more importantly beat Bolton, Man United, Stoke and Sheffield Wednesday to reach the FA Cup semi-final against Leeds. And then, following an intense 3-2 extra time win at Hillsborough, Coventry made the FA Cup final, facing up against seven-time champions Tottenham Hotspur at Wembley in the club's biggest game ever. Two minutes in and Clive Allen had scored for Spurs to put them ahead, however come the end of another dramatic 90 and Coventry were able to make it 2-2 going into extra time before in the 96th minute something special happened. Oh in McGrath, here come Coventry again, Pickering waiting in the middle, and another own goal! For the first time in their history, Coventry City lifted major silverware, with a team made up of no star names with teamwork and determination being the driving factor behind their success, rather than solely talent. This was undeniably the greatest moment in Coventry City's history. However, as we all know, what goes up must come back down. A few seasons of mid-table finishes later and Coventry would find themselves a founding member of the Premier League, where the Sky Blue started spending more and more money but not really seeing any success on the pitch, with signings often being underwhelming. Stadium renovations also took place as attendances started to increase, however this wouldn't be able to propel the Sky Blues away from regular relegation battles and after the departure of Robbie Keane and Gary McAllister in the year 2000, Coventry found themselves relegated from the Premier League following a 34 year stint in England's top flight. Following relegation, Coventry would be in financial turmoil, partly due to a collapsed EFL TV deal, with various cutbacks taking place at the club leaving little hope of any quick return to the Premier League. And then, just two years after being relegated, Coventry finished 20th in the second tier, only two places above the relegation zone, with the following year seeing 17th and 19th place finishes, as well as a 2005 move to the Rico Arena, a stadium that they didn't own, before the 07-08 campaign saw their lowest league finish in a half century staying up by just a single point. It would be during this season where Coventry would see a change in ownership as the Sisu group stepped in to save them from administration with just 30 minutes to spare. However, things would not get much better for the Sky Blues. After another three disappointing seasons, Coventry would be relegated from the championship in 2012, where despite numerous offers of a takeover, CC refused to sell the club, largely believed to be because they wanted ownership of the club's stadium. However, after failing to purchase the ground, CC defaulted on rent payments, claiming the money owed was simply too much for a now League One side, starting years of legal battles between the club and stadium owners. As well as this, Coventry's poor finances led to them losing key players and after eight weeks they sat second bottom of the table, set for back-to-back -back relegations before manager Mark Robbins was hired, taking them from the relegation zone to a few points off the playoffs in a matter of weeks, before then leaving to take the Huddersfield job in February. 
Robbins had been the first real glimmer of hope in years for Coventry and following his departure the side would slip back down the league as well as facing a points deduction due to issues with their stadium. Finishing the season in 15th and would also start the following campaign on minus 10 points. More importantly than this though, due to various unresolved issues in financing, Coventry were forced out of their stadium and had to play a year ground sharing with Northampton, effectively playing every single game away from home for an entire season where they'd managed to stay up once again. However, come the 2016-17 season, Coventry was sat bottom of the table 35 games in when former manager Mark Robbins rejoined the club. Robbins would be able to win the Sky Blues a trophy in one of his first games back at the Sky Blues, however was unable to keep them up as Coventry dropped down to the 4th division for just the second time ever. This relegation also made them the first ever member of the initial Premier League season to be relegated to the 4th tier, with the Sky Blues having seen 48 consecutive seasons finishing outside of the top 6 of any division. The club was still in financial ruins as well, owing almost £50 million, and with the relegation meaning even lower income, the club had well and truly reached their lowest ever points. But then, things started to change. No more time. The club with the illustrious past, the fractious present, but now they have hope for the future. They are promoted to League One. Look what it means. Having finally finished sixth, Coventry saw their first promotion in 51 years at Wembley, returning to League One at the first attempt alongside a certain Luton town. And then in Coventry's first season in League One, they finished in a comfortable eighth place before more drama with the club stadium and their owners took place. Once again, they were exiled from their ground for the 1920 season, agreeing a deal with Birmingham to play at St Andrews for the campaign, where after 20 games, they found themselves in seventh place just outside the playoffs. Now to many of you, this may already sound like an incredible feat given the circumstances, but what came next was even more remarkable. 11 wins and 3 draws in the next 14 games fired them to the top of the league by the 7th of March, 5 points clear of 2nd place with a game in hand, before the pandemic halted the season. And then, following a few weeks of waiting patiently, Coventry were crowned champions, being promoted to the championship less than 3 years since they were relegated to League 2, with incredible shrewd business like the signing of top scorer Matt Godden alongside the incredible effort of Mark Robbins proving that money isn't everything. Once again, the 2021 season saw Coventry play at a now empty St Andrews, staying up comfortably in 16th place, followed up by a 12th place finish last season, having even been as high as third early into the campaign. On a shoestring budget, Mark Robbins had built a strong championship squad, featuring the likes of talented Swede Victor Jokerez signed for just £1 million. However, despite relative optimism going into this campaign, things did not start well for Coventry. 10 games in and they'd won just once and found themselves bottom of the league, being hit with even more instability as Wasps Holdings, the owners of their stadium, collapsed, leaving them in the dock over the future of their home ground before neither Sisu or Doug King, a man linked with the takeover of the club, were able to secure the stadium, instead being bought by notorious football villain Mike Ashley. Now many of you will hear this, a club bottom of the league losing millions every season and potentially about to be homeless and think that they were dead and buried. But Coventry didn't want to play to the script. A single 1-0 win against Cardiff quickly became a second 1-0 win and then a 2-0 win and then another win and another win and another win and very quickly Coventry went from bottom of the league to one of the most informed teams in the entirety of Europe going into the World Cup break. Coventry had finally built some form and looked near invincible, ready for the return of the English game where nothing could go wrong. Just one win in eight games after the World Cup saw them fall from just two points off the playoffs back down to 15th. But that's when something incredible happened at the Sky Blues. After almost two decades of pain, Sisu finally sold the club, with Doug King buying a controlling 85% share as well as wiping the club's debt believed to be at around £60 million. From the boardroom to the fans, it felt like everyone connected to the club had a huge weight lifted from their shoulders, allowing Mark Robbins to get his team playing again. From their loss against West Brom on the 3rd of February all the way through to the 19th of April, Coventry lost just a single game, rising up from 15th to 8th, only one point off the playoffs with three games to go. And then, with the score tied at 1-1 in the 54th minute, Gustavo Heyman scored for Coventry, winning them the game and dragged them into the playoffs for the first time all season, holding on to 5th place on the final day against Middlesbrough in the first of three games they'd play against each other in a row, with the two sides drawing each other in the playoffs. 
Coventry would host Middlesbrough first with the game ending in a 0-0 draw, meaning the Sky Blues travelled to the North East needing to score. Drea City that has spent two decades without Premier League football is dreaming about the good times returning. 22 seasons since their 34-year spell in England's top division ended, Coventry find themselves just one game of football away from a return, fired into this position through the brilliance of star players like Victor Jokerez, but most importantly the brilliance of Mark Robbins. From being the most depressing club to support in the entire country just five years ago to potentially needing just a single goal to be back in the big time, Coventry City's remarkable story is one of pain and suffering, but also belief and resilience. And whether they win or lose on Saturday, one thing is for sure, Coventry City FC will never stop fighting.